Now we all know, I'm sure, or at least we probably all remember that Joe Biden said, if you make less than $400,000 a year, I am not going to take any more money from you. We'll see how that goes. You know, obviously, I think they got to raise taxes on everybody because they keep printing more and more money. You know, taxes on everybody are probably going to have to get increased, so he probably lied there. What we're going to talk about today is the, the, the current administration's tax plan and how it will affect the real estate market. In my opinion, understand I'm not a tax professional, so do not take my advice. I'm just doing a little bit of reading online. I thought I'd share it with y'all. So currently, the current national debt is over $28 trillion. That is $86,702 per citizen, which changes all the time because it is always in increasingly growing. Currently, during my lifetime, we will definitely probably go into default. I know that we're the, there are talks about it now, but we're going to have some massive implications in the future, come in my opinion. Anyways, here's what the Joe Biden tax plan means for people who are in the real estate business or people who are looking to buy, in my opinion, from the research I've done. I think that this will make it harder and harder for the average individual to buy homes. That is not a good thing, in my opinion. So, obviously, I am against raising taxes. I think taxes should be lower. The U.S. government has a horrible track record of spending habits. Some people on Facebook were trying to argue with me about this the other day, but they don't know what they're talking about, in my opinion because I think every single one of us want to keep more and more of our own money in our own pockets, right? I hope I'm right. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who likes giving money away. So, uh, you know, Joe is looking to raise the capital gains tax from to 48.4%. Now, it is currently 15 to 20%, depending on how much the property sells for, right? And 48.4% would be the highest capital gains tax in the world. Yes, you just heard me right. Now, you may not believe me, but you can go to taxfoundation.org and you can research this for yourself. Denmark is for the highest other than ours, which is at 42%. And then you have Chile, 40%. Uh, France is 34%. Um, Canada's is only 26%. You got Australia, 23%. The UK's 20%. Uh, you know, Greece is 15%. Mexico is 10%. Colombia is 10%. And America wants to make theirs 48.4%. Currently, we are at 15 to 20%, depending on how, how much the property sells for. He also has talked about doing an unrealized capital gains tax, which means if something goes from $100,000 to $400,000, which you don't even sell it, then he wants to tax you on that. Now, understand, we all know things go up and down, up and down, up and down, just like the just like a Ferris wheel, you know? So he wants to tax your money you haven't even made before you even make it. What if it goes back down? I mean, it's absolutely absurd to me. There have also been talks about getting rid of the 1031 exchange, which you may or may not know about. If you don't know about it, that's basically where if you sell something for six hundred thousand dollars, you gotta sell, you gotta buy something for six hundred thousand dollars or more, equal or greater than what you sold it for, right? To defer those taxes, that is highly done by many very savvy real estate entrepreneurs like myself. I'm in the middle of one right now, right? And so what this is going to do is when people who are investors you know, they sell something, they have to buy that, they have to buy something of equal or greater value to defer the capital gains tax. They don't want to pay that 15, 20%, whatever it is, right? You know, so they can go and buy something and then they can get rid of that tax, right? Which saves, which is good for everybody right now. Except that, you know, what that's going to do is when people, you know, have these properties, in my opinion, what they're going to do is so they're just gonna stop buying things. They'll just keep buy, you know, taking the, you know, taking the the debt out against it. You know, some of y'all are you know familiar with the Burr method: buy, rehab, repeat. You know, and I'm used to you can buy something for twenty thousand. It can be worth forty thousand. 
You can put more money into it, make it worth 100000 You refinance it, you take that money out and go buy something else. That's a very popular method. That is what I've done to buy pretty much every single one of my properties. And it's been very successful for me. If you don't know anything about that, I'd love to talk to you about it and how I can help you do that. So basically, debt is not taxable. So if I own something and I owe $20,000 on it, but it's worth $100,000, I can go and take that debt out against it. Normally, 80%, 20% value is what the bank will lend to me on it. And I can take that money out and go buy something else, which is all another way to defer the taxes. A lot of loopholes there. You need to talk to your financial advisor or CPA if you're looking into deferring your taxes. And so this will keep the increase, the, the inventory, I mean, in real estate going lower and lower and lower because people are always looking to defer their taxes. And unfortunately, that is going to make it very hard for a lot of people who are owner occupants to buy their houses. And unfortunately, that's just the way the market is, but it's just the market we, the, that we're in. And with the increase in taxes, that will become even more and more, you know, the, the trend. Because if they want to increase your capital gains tax to 42%, whoo, I mean, excuse me, to 48%, they want to take, basically, you might as well just go ahead and say 50% of your money. That is absolutely absurd, especially when the United States government has a very, very reckless spending habit. We all know they are crazy with spending this damn money. You know, I mean, how much money did we just leave over in Iraq? on a board that was basically, we didn't do nothing, we didn't get anything out of. We left the billions of dollars worth of equipment over there that me and you gave them in taxes. And we all know, maybe we don't all know, but if you don't know, I'm about to tell you, in the last 12 months, more than 40% of all the gover of all the money in circulation has been printed by the government. It's like, why would you even save your money today? Because the government's just going to keep printing more and more money, which is what, in my opinion, has raised our inflation so high. And they're trying to curb inflation right now. But as we all know, or probably should know, in my opinion, inflation is going to keep going higher and higher and higher. Interest rates are at an all-time low right now. But with the current debt the United States is in, they're going to have to keep raising you know, all of the rates so get rid of these, you know, expectations of keeping rates low because rates are going to go higher, in my opinion. So I don't know what's going to happen with this real estate market. Hopefully the United States government can figure out this debt issue. They can get their spending habits out of control, under control. But, you know, I don't think that anybody that we have in office has any mind of fiscal responsibility because, you know, you got some people trying to, everybody's trying to blame everybody. Really and truly, it's all of their fault. And it's not one party to blame. That's just my opinion. And if you like my videos, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to try to bring you more information about the real estate market and my opinion. Once again, I'm not a tax professional. Go, uh, go find a tax professional that can give you better advice. Obviously, don't take my advice. I'm just a real estate person, so go find your tax pro. Y'all have a good afternoon.